So I had done that uh, air conditioner, and then the other day I was asked if I would make a wall-mounted air conditioner. And I just happened to be looking at some walkthroughs of the video game The Last of Us, and I saw all kinds of air conditioners in a bunch of scenes, and I took some screenshots, and uh, it really inspired me to do the wall-mounted air conditioner. And so that's what I'm going to do for you. So here we have an image here that you can download, a reference image, and I brought it into Blender, and I'm going to press S3, and I'm going to look from the side and pull it back out of the way. And so we're going to model this. It's not exactly the same, but it's inspired by The Last of Us. All right, so let's do this. Let's pull this down to around where we think uh, the middle is. And what I, what I do need to tell you is that it's going to be some it's pretty simple modeling. And then uh, it's going, there's going to be some texturing done in Substance Painter and a little bit more detail. But it's not going to be um, overly detailed. Okay, so we've got that. So let's start by bringing in a plane. Rotate X90. I'll actually pull it up to here and scale it. Something like that. Let's scale this in the X. Let's move this along. Okay. There we go. All right, now you can see from the side profile what it's going to look like. So I'm going to extrude out like this and a little bit more. And then I'm going to bring an edge loop down and we can look in wireframe actually and see. We're going to put it right around there. That's going to be a beveled edge there. And I'm going to select this edge and I'm going to pull it back a little bit like this. All right, that's going to be our, our basic shape. Okay, time to bevel. I'm going to take the top and the bottom in edge selection. And again, I can look at this. Control B and pull pull till I get down to there. You see this edge here is coming down to the bottom of that white area. Like that. And then I'm going to roll up. One, two, three. That'll give me my five. Now I'm going to select. Let's do the top. Let's do this this edge and this edge and for this one I'm just going to bevel just by looking just like that so that we get a rounded front and a rounded back now I'm going to grab the middle there so I just press by the way shift uh, shift and alt and clicked so I get the entire edge instead of just selecting one edge all right so shift and alt and you get the whole thing and I can look at the diagram doesn't really matter too much uh, I'm going to bevel all right, and we'll go for the same five, just something like that. And we're four off the diagram a little bit, that's okay. Shift Alt and click there. And I'm gonna hold the control key down as I click and uh, we should be able to get the rest of it there. So that's that side. I'll do the same thing here, Shift Alt and click. Hold down the control key to continue that to there so we have both of those and now I'm just going to do this on my own and I'll stick with the five and we'll sort of round it out like that um, a lot of people would do these pretty sharp I tend to do mine more rounded which I don't know how if that looks realistic or not but that's that's what I like to do so okay so now we're going to look in wireframe and we're going to set up some edge loops to d determine uh, these edges right here so We'll drop an edge loop in and control B and roll back to zero. So I just have the two edges going out. And this one has hit pretty much the area I want it to be first there on the right. So now I'm just going to box select here and pull this one out further to there. Like that, because we will be insetting. So we don't you know, have to go right to this edge. We go a little bit further. We're gonna inset this as we're gonna do right now. I'm going to select this face. So I press three, or you can go to face selection there. I'll go back into front view and wireframe. Okay, I've got this face selected. I'm going to press I to inset, and I'm going to pull into about there. So we're off the diagram a little bit. There's our square, but that's, again, we're just using this as a, as a guide. 
So there's my face and it's inserted. I wanted it away from this edge here. All right, and the bottom edge. Okay, now I'm going to extrude inwards and I'm going to need to make the cover. So I'm going to not delete this. I want it to be dark in there and so I'm going to keep that, but I'm just going to duplicate it. Shift D, pull it out and break it out by pressing P and we have that, but let's hide that for now. And I'll turn on the cavity shader so it's a little easier to see. And I'll also switch to both and pull these sliders up so we can see it very well. Okay, I want to round these corners a little bit so it's a bit, a bit rounded, a bit more pleasing to look at in my opinion. So I'm going to select and hold down shift and click on the inside edges. Just the inside edges is all I'm doing. Okay, they're all selected. Now I'm going to zoom in and just look at this one. Control B and pull. And I'm going, there's two. I want a three, four, five. I like to use an odd number so there's one right in the middle. And the other two will define the rest of the curve. So let's see how much of a curve. That, that, I think that's probably fine like that. Okay, but now we need to actually bevel this sharp edge. So shift alt and click. We should get the whole thing. Zoom in and just watch what you're doing. You don't want to bump into that there. So pull. And let's see if that worked well. Okay, we'll do that one more time. Uh, just before that, I'm going to uh, merge by distance and recalculate outside just, just to be sure. And hopefully I can get a slightly better bevel than that. Control B, pull. Yeah, I think that worked a little nicer. I'll pull something like that. All right, now the button, the light is bouncing off that, and I think it's going to look nicer. All right, that will get filled with dirt in Substance Painter when we do that. So Alt H, let's bring this back, and let's look from the front. And we now have a curve on the main body, but we don't have a curve on this panel. So I'm going to go into Edit Mode and One for Vertex Selection, and select everything. And I'm going to I'm going to create a curve on this. I could try Wireframe. Yeah, it's a little bit hard to see. I might just do it this way. Shift Control B now because you're doing individual vertices. Shift Control B, pull, and I'm just going to sort of get a similar curve with five. That sounds good or that looks good. And now I'm going to extrude backwards to give this a little bit of thickness. It doesn't have to be very thick, just like that. And now I want to bevel this edge and the back edge because you may see that so i'm going to select that face and hold shift and select that face and just try to get in there and control b and pull but i only need three so i'm roll back all the way gives me two i know it's a little hard to see one more gives me a total of three edges in there and i can shade smooth this and if there's any shading errors i would come over here although i'll be joining it soon so this becomes obsolete I guess but I'll put on uh, weighted normals and normals auto smooth and for the moment I can shade smooth this and there will also be shading issues that we'll have to deal with so for the moment let's put on weighted normal and normals auto smooth and if it doesn't clear it all up I'm not going to worry about it yet because we'll be cutting more into this all right underneath this panel I want to put these pieces these lines so we're going to do that now let's come in here and just bring the 3d cursor right to there and in fact let's use a piece of this let's just select an edge we got one edge selected shift D to duplicate pull it down P to break it out that's right in the middle now I'm going to scale this in the X and then I'm going to start making what I need. I'm going to pull it back and I'm going to take it and I'm going to rotate Y90 to stand it up. And just start getting it roughly into position. Okay, so how do these go? They just stick down, right? All right, so we'll, uh, we're going to pull this in behind and pull it up just so a little bit shows at the back. Let's just start working on this thing. In fact, let's focus on that and that slash key. That's a little easier. So we're looking from behind now. So select that, go into edit mode, E to extrude, give it a little bit of thickness like this. Now we're never going to see the back of it. And by the way, this fun, weird coloring is because I've got shade smooth out. We're not going to see the back and we're not going to see that. 
I might see the bottom. Let's get rid of those faces. And let's go ahead and sh and and bevel this. I'm going to use five. And let's bevel these edges here. I'm going to use three. That's going to be fine. Now I'll take the whole thing and I'll just pull it up a little bit and just have a look at this. Let's slash key to bring everything else back. Let's see what we had over here. These things. All right. Now that's pretty thick. It doesn't have to be that. So let's look from the side and just go into edit mode and just just make sure that it's sort of making contact there. And then in wireframe, I could I can uh, go to vertex selection and box select and just pull it in, just not into my curve. Give it a little bit of thickness like that, and it probably doesn't even need that much thickness. But that's I think that's going to be fine. All right, so let's see. I just want looking at these. I'm going to make it a little bit more pronounced. I'm going to go in. And I'm just going to scale it in the axis a little bit. Bring it down a touch. Okay. So I'm going to go into wireframe. I suppose I could use this to get it even more exact. So maybe I will do that. Like that. Down a little bit. All right, so let's position this now. Let's take this and slide it over to here. All right, and then I'm going to use the array modifier. So click on array. In the X, I'm just going to drag this out till it goes roughly on there. And let's increase the count. See, oh, it's pretty close to where I would want it. And then maybe I'll just adjust these a little bit. And I think that's probably fine. Like that. All right, so that is how that piece would go. To be honest with you, I think I need to move them down just a little, little bit because I'm off the diagram a bit. All right, with that done, I've deleted some faces I don't need. And so I'm going to apply the array and I'm gonna join it to this. So that's join. I'm gonna come in and press M, merge by distance. I didn't get rid of anything and recalculate outside just to be sure. All right, let's take this now and bring it back as if it would fit there, but I want to angle it a little bit so we can see inside. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to select an edge on here. It could be this top one here or one a little bit more inside. Doesn't really matter. I'm just take that one and I'm going to bring the 3D cursor there by pressing Shift S cursor to select it. And then I can switch to 3D cursor and that's my pivot. So if I grab this and I look from the side and I rotate, it will rotate around that pivot. So I'm just going to press R and I'm going to pull it out a little bit. Now, you're never gonna look at it exactly down the side like that. You're gonna see it from, you know, here or below or something like that. All right. Um, it's possible that I would wanna pull it in a small amount like that. And that's the idea. It's gonna be dark in here. You're not gonna see the inside because of dirt and stuff, and this stuff's gonna have to sort of hang like that. All right, so far so good. Don't forget to save along the way, and periodically you can do this. I've already been checking for that. All right, so now we're going to do this section here. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to select this face in face selection. I'm going to wireframe and we're going to inset this. So you can see my sort of beige colored box here. I'm going to press I to inset and I'm going to pull till I roughly get the shape of that. And again, it's a little bit off the diagram, but this is the general idea. Okay, now this is gonna be on an angle, so I'm just going to extrude and gesture in. In other words, I'm just gonna press E, and I'm just gonna slide in, push it in, around there. I've just come in a, an inch or so, if that makes sense. Now, I also want it to be, um, I wanna have a pattern on this thing here. So I'm going to break this off. I'm gonna press P, separate by selection this piece is going to have a pattern on it and so i'm going to assign a material right now so i'm going to come to the materials click on it this is going to be like a grill and i'm not sure how to spell grill so i'm going to do it like that i don't know if that's right and this is going to be the body so i might as well do that and that's those are the only two materials we're going to have the body and the grill so that piece is there that's fine and now we're going to make these kind of slat like things so let's do that. So I'm gonna come in, 
I'm going to select an edge. So I went into edge selection number two. I'm selecting that edge. Let's go back to median point. Shift D to duplicate it, pull it out, and P to break it out. And we can make our stuff out of this piece. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to extrude it back a little bit to give it some depth. And I'm also going to extrude it up a little bit to give it some height. And let's focus just on that thing. We're not going to see the back of this, and we're also not going to see the side. So I'm in three face selection, I'm going to select that face. There's a side and the other side. Holding shift and doing that, delete faces. I do want to bevel this, so just want to get into position here. In edge selection, number two, select that edge and that edge, just the two front edges. And then press Control B and pull. And I could probably just get away with three, really, because we're not gonna be up close or anything. We can shade smooth, we may have some shading issues, but let's not worry about that. All right, bring that back. Now, let's look in wireframe and let's slide this up. You can make it a little thicker if you want. Scale in the Z, just to make it a bit more prominent. And I'm going to shift D to duplicate it and pull it down so I have the two of these. They're not in the right position yet, but I've got them. All right, so we'll work on the positioning in a moment. Cool. Now I'm going to create these vertical bars. So how to do that? Well, might as well take an edge if we can. So I've just grabbed that shift D to duplicate, pull it out to break it out take that scale it down let's rotate y90 right now we can look from the front if we want i can actually even just move it right over to here or right, i'm going to scale it some more and let's see in wireframe we can get the approximate thickness of this so let's just extrude it out like that. And then we'll take this and we'll extrude it back a ways. I'm going to take the whole thing and bring it in just sort of underneath here. And maybe I'll pull the back back like that. We're never going to see the back, so we're going to get rid of that. We're also never going to see the top or the bottom, however, I'm not sure how tall I need it to be yet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have that selected and then I'm gonna shift select this stuff and I'm gonna start pulling this in. Now this stuff's gonna be rotated soon and I'll fix the shading and I'll put a bevel on here. So just to hang on, we're gonna do all that. So that is going in there. It'll be rotated. That might be the right height. So let's just focus on that and let's just start deleting stuff we don't need. All right, and that'll improve the shading anyhow. So that top and the bottom, let's get rid of those. And then let's bevel the front. Control B, pull, and three is enough. You see that corrects the shading right there, right? Okay, slash key, front view. Okay, so let's bring you down to here. And then let's use the array again in the X and just pull it out until it pretty much matches up with that. Increase the count. It looks like we want five of these and then just adjust this as you like. And we have this so far. Before we continue, let's work on the body. Let's do the same thing we did on the top. Let's select this edge here. Hold down shift and select this edge. Come over to the other side, this edge, and this edge. Control B, pull. Sometimes it depends which way you have to go. There's three, four, five. Do that. Shift Alt and click that edge. And just zoom in. Control B and pull. And just don't go over that vertex. Something like this. And that already is helping to correct the shading problems that we have. Okay. 
I'm going to just for the moment hide that because it's a little confusing in there. All right. So what I want to do now is I want to decide if I like the distance of those and just double check. They are pretty close together and we seem pretty much on the diagram. So I'm going to stick with that. So uh, I'm going to apply the array and I'm going to shift and click on that and control J and that will join them. I'm going to look from the side in wireframe, go into edit mode, make sure it's all selected and I'm going to start rotating. And we're just going to get the position that we need for these. So as you can see, I'm going to need to ex expand these or lengthen them. And that is about the position that I would want right here. And of course, we're going to have the, the grill in the background. So you're not going to see the back part. So I think I'm going to be okay with that. Let me just look. Now, you know what? I would like more distance between these. So let's try this. Let's select a bit and go Control L and then switch over here to normal. And now I can pull this along its normal. I'm just gonna pull that one up a little bit. I'm gonna select a bit of this one, Control L, and pull down a little bit. So I'm off the, the diagram, but I just like the spacing a little bit better for this particular size of hole. All right, so the way I'm gonna deal with this now is I'm going to, let's say, um, how should I do this? Let's go into vertex selection and box select the top that if I just there, or you can do it from any position you want. I just want the tops and you'll notice that I'm still in this normal mode. I don't want that. I don't want anything but the top vertices. So have I got them all? Okay. I'm going to go back into solid view and you can see this Y arrow here is in line with these and I'm going to push these up until they make contact with the body. And I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom. So, you know, you have to tweak these things in order to get what exactly what you what you want. So I'm pressing B and I'm drawing a box around these like that. I'll go back in a solid view though. And again, the Y arrow is following the correct direction. I'm going to just bring that down. Alt H, bring back that material there we're going to use for the grill. All right. So, I mean, it, it might be a little off the diagram, but it pretty much looks like the diagram, doesn't it? Save again. Okay. Now we're going to make this little piece where you could have like a little button on it or any other stuff you'll see I'll do a little bit of that in texturing so an easy way to do that is to come in here and say hey that's a perfect rectangle I could use that I'm still in normal and that's going to work really well because I'm just going to go shifty to duplicate push along the green arrow I'm going to scale a little bit until it sort of looks like it fits slide it back I'll have to round this in a moment let's look from the front let's go into wireframe two for edge selection grab the edge now it's the x or the red arrow slide that back and we've got this pretty much in position okay but we'll have to break it out let's break it out so it's its own object and you know you can then adjust the size of it a little bit okay so we're gonna let's round this before we actually give it some thickness it's a little bit easier so let's look from the front let's go into vertex selection and just get these two vertices here all right because this corner is rounded these ones don't have to be rounded the same amount let's go shift Control b and pull and just let's say actually you know what it's easier if i go into wireframe you can see you can see the vertices a little bit better so shift control B, pull, and I want five in there like that. All right, and I can scale this whole thing just a little bit bigger so it looks like it fits. And then these ones, I don't want, I don't want them flat. So I'm just going to do whatever I want. Shift control B, I'm just gonna bevel them a little bit, done like that. Okay, now we're going to extrude in a bit, but I'll get rid of that face. We're never gonna see that. I'm going to take the front face here and let's bevel that just with three. So back to two, 
three and we have our piece nicely fitting in there looking like the diagram all right we are almost done the modeling there's only one more thing for modeling itself and that's this piece right here so i'm going to come in here and there's a rectangle right there waiting for us shift d scale wireframe scale a bit move it down slide it over a little bit all right you might think this should be the z but because we're normal uh, it has a different axis so just follow the arrows something like that go back into solid view let's break it out we're going to be joining it but it's easier to do it this way just follow the arrows like that e to extrude push back delete that back face and then in edge selection select the edges and bevel those i'm going to use five and then shift alt and click there bevel and i'm going to use three and just decide how you want it embedded like that now this one's looking a little dark there's a chance that it's flipped ah look at that so you can take the whole thing alt n recalculate outside and make sure it's all blue and then we're good to go okay so that is it for the modeling right so i'm going to delete that i'm wondering if this is a little narrow i might want it a little thicker and if i did i could come in and wireframe box select and i could grab all of this stuff here just don't get any of the front stuff and i could pull it back a little bit and make it a little thicker easy to do okay the next thing we're going to do is join some pieces in fact we're going to join it all so i'm going to take this and this and control j this and this and control j this and this and this and control j and it should all be joined together except that last piece but because we've already got the material on it here we'll be able to do that easily so i'm going to um, i'm going to join that now i'm going to come in and m merge by distance make sure i'll do one more recalculate outside and i will go back to global and i'll do a double check here okay now let's see how many polys this is 2100 all right it's not an overly impressive uh model or anything it's just something i'm just switching to that so we can see the the, sh the shading on here and i believe i beveled everything as i needed to you'll notice i did not use the bevel modifier i did it all by hand and that's just the way that i like to roll there it is so what we will have when we do the texturing is a sort of an old um, apocalyptic style air conditioner uh, and the grill on this you will see sort of a metal kind of a pattern on there inside there'll be dirt so you won't see inside the crevices that well anyhow and that'll be it just a simple simple prop along the lines of the last of us so let's leave it at that actually for this video and we'll come back and we'll unwrap this and that will be super simple because all we're going to do is we're going to select the whole thing i'm going to use smart uv project and that will be it and that will be fine all right we'll come back next time and we'll do the texturing so uh, if you're modeling this grab the reference image if you would like to and good luck and we'll see you next time